you cannot talk about forehands, in my opinion, without talking about Del Potro. He has a forehand that just makes my eyes pop open and my jaw drop. In 2009, Juan Martin Del Potro won the U.S. Open, taking the title from Roger Federer. If you're sitting courtside, it's like the sound, the ball coming off the racket. It's like a small explosion when he hits one of these winners. This one was clocked at 110 miles an hour. Steps into it, has a really like good backswing. He's able to generate a lot of power from his legs as usual and just like beat down the ball. Forehands are something that we see over and over and over and over and over again when you watch tennis. It can be easy to take them for granted. It's such a fundamental part of the game. It's like a quarterback's pass. It's a reflection of how they've been coached, how they've been taught, what their strengths and weaknesses are, what their preferences are. In the 2012 US Open, nearly 70% of winners on the men's side were forehands, and on the women's side, it was like 65%. It's the bigger weapon in tennis because it tends to be on the player's dominant side. They're able to marshal all of their body into generating power or spin, or, or they're able to control the trajectory of the ball in a really nice way. You're able to transfer energy, like driving up through the legs, opening up the hips. Everything is moving in concert. So pulling it around the arm, the butt of the racket is facing the ball, and everything is sort of moving together so that no energy is wasted. Paying attention to a player's forehand is sometimes a good way to sort of get to know them because every player has sort of a distinctive stroke and it often says something about them. Like we've seen it all, you know, hit with a lot of energy and a lot of kind of passion, even in his like giant swing, you know, that says something sort of about who he is as a player. Whereas Roger Federer has a very kind of controlled fluid motion that tends to kind of be more in line with his encore persona of this kind of like Cool, calm, collected elegance. The last couple of years been considered one of the toughest guys mentally on the tour. So this point is from the 2008 semifinal between Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic. I like this example because you actually see Federer hit three forehands in a row and they're in a real progression. The first one is the return of serve. It's a very kind of neutral ball and he's not trying to do too much with it. He just hits it right back to the center of the court. The second shot is much more aggressive. He's hitting a deeper ball. He's you know, putting a little bit of an angle on it, putting Djokovic on the defensive. Djokovic can only kind of hit a weak shot back and Federer is able to step into the shot and hit his like famous Federer forehand. This is from the semifinal match between Naomi Osaka and Madison Keys at last year's US Open. And those two players have two of the best forehands in the game. Osaka has very good technique, very clean. She hits the ball calmly. You can sort of see her set up, see her follow kind of textbook technique where her butt of her racket is sort of facing the ball and she's following through in this kind of nice fluid way. And Madison Keys has almost a looseness to her swing. She has what is known in tennis as easy power. The ball sort of seems to be coming off the racket faster than it's coming in. It sounds different and the ball just kind of like pops. Maybe no woman hits the ball as hard as Keys. In fact, her average forehand speeds are sometimes clocked at greater speeds than the average men. If Madison Keys isn't like hitting her spots, she can have a really bad day. Whereas someone like Osaka is maybe able to adjust her forehand a little bit, hit with a little bit more margin be a little bit safer and able to pull out some of those kind of bad day matches. This is from the fourth round of the US Open in 2013 um, between Rafael Nadal and Bo Kohlschreiber. Nadal is very animated, very pumped up. Nadal is not usually playing from behind. And this forehand is actually a good example of what a great defender Nadal is. So he is able to hit an absolute monster of a winner from a very difficult position. Philip Kohlschreiber has you know, done what I was saying more players should do. He's gotten to net, he's you know, hit a good approach shot, he has gotten a weak response from net, he's got a good volley, he looks like he's gonna win the point, but Nadal is at a full sprint, he's running across the court. Somehow he's able to hit just like an incredible passing shot and he's able to do it because he has this amazing um, technique, even at a full sprint. You can see Cole Schreiber is like throwing back his head, like, what, am, what do I gotta do to beat this guy? 
These players have learned their forehands when they're like four, five, six, seven, eight. For a lot of these players, their forehand is their strength, and so you're able to see a player at his or her best. Really, the forehand is what is writing those big checks for players.